YouTube, what the crap's going on? Air of Carthage here. Are you all ready for a weekend? I know it's almost the weekend. When I post this, it'll be a Friday. How about some Primarian Rome versus Macedon, right? Will this be vibes of Sinocephale? Which, honestly, I need to go read up on that battle again. It's been a long time since I read about it. Um, so yeah, I want to go read up on it. So there were battles between uh, maniple type armies of Romans and actual Alexandrian phalanxes. Um, so yeah, it's interesting to go read that history. Obviously, I think that a lot of folks who love these historical games kind of thrive off of the what-if scenarios, right, uh, that you can play out in these games. Probably similar to what you see in terms of what-if scenarios for the folks who are into the fantasy Total War games now, right? All the people who are really into the lore um, of the Warhammer fantasy, and then of course all of the Lord of the Rings mods and other mods they made. People probably love all those what-if scenarios. And uh, I think this Macedon versus Rome match should be a really fun version of that. Now, in Total War Rome 2, uh, I would say that in a multiplayer standpoint, um, uh, that Rome is just straight up superior um, in terms of, you know, a faction. I, I would say there are strengths that Macedon has. Their skirmishing is not bad. Um, they've got pretty cheap goods. Uh, they have very good cost-efficient uh, medium shot cavalry in Thessalian cavalry. Pikes are very good at holding from the front. They are poor against missiles, and they are poor when it comes to maneuverability. Um, so the Romans will certainly have superior maneuverability. Now, interesting enough, um, you don't see this very often in Rome too, but one thing that maniple-type troops could do is they could tighten up their formation into a blockier style formation, and that would give them even better maneuverability or ability to punch through small holes in the lines, stuff like that. Um, but I think that a lot of times we see players in these games operating basically at full width most of the time. Um, part of that has to do with uh, being hit less by missiles. Uh, however, I do think being deeper does probably change a little bit of the, the bracing piece. But yeah, typically you'll see um, people spread a little wider here. Um, there's a lot of skirmishing early on here. Very aggressive fight here between these mercenary Thracian cavalry and uh, these Velites and auxiliary Numidians. The mercenary Thracian cavalry are far superior in melee to the, the Numidian cavalry, which I actually really hate. Numidian cavalry should have been a decent melee combatant by all historical accounts, but CA did not make them that way. Uh, so the Romans are chasing them off with these extraordinary. I like the Velites, just a cheap unit here to absorb some frontline fire. It also is you know, fits the Primarian bill here. Uh, it gives them some ability, but Macedon flexing some of that cavalry muscle here. They do have some citizen cavalry, interesting pick. There is some Thessalian cavalry. The general for the Macedonians is in a shield bearer unit here, so an old school hoplite unit, versus the main line is levy pikes uh, for the most part, and then we're going to see hoplites supporting that on the left flank. And then it looks like some mercenary Rhodian slingers up front. There could be... Yeah, there's more Macedonian units. I can't see all their units. Um, so, more Macedonian units to come. The Roman army is going to be your standard Primarian fare here with some Velites up front. Um, and then we're going to have these Saki Extraordinari here. So, an interesting uh, pick. These definitely could fit the Primarian bill uh, in terms of bringing some auxiliary-type troops into combat, which Rome was known to do. Uh, we've got Histadi up front, um, and then a main line here of Principe, and Principe are going to be very sturdy, uh, heavy infantry. Like, by most faction standards, Principe are, like, probably better than, than a lot of factions on the mid-tier level, for sure. Uh, they're not the best that Rome has to offer in, in that kind of variety, but they are still very solid units. And then we've got Triari backing them up. These were the grizzled veterans of the Roman army, the best equipped, the most experienced and they are holding up the final line with their spears. Uh, I see at least three units of Triari. I see a couple of Saki Equites Extraordinari supporting a general. So the Romans relying solely on auxiliary type cav uh, for this fight, which is honestly probably not all that unthinkable uh, for the Romans. They did have Equites, and the Equites obviously were members of Roman society. Um, and you know you, you would see those as well, but again, not, not unheard of for the Romans to be using auxiliary cav even in those early days from what i remember right now i am no historian so if i get it wrong feel free to correct me I'm not pretending to know it all uh so yeah a pike line for macedon hoplite support on the flanks a extremely dangerous skirmish contingent uh, up front with the three rhodian slingers 
Uh, looks like, or no, oh, one's a Cretan archer. So two slingers, one archer, still very dangerous. There could be more Macedonian troops hidden in the blind spot. This dark area here on the map is indicating areas where units could be hidden that I would not be able to see uh, for Macedon's sake because I'm watching this replay from the standpoint of the Romans. Uh, the replay here does not give me universal vision, so it is possible that Macedon has more units hidden, and I kind of think they do because levy pikes are very cheap. Hoplites are also not very expensive, and I just don't see a whole lot of expensive stuff here. I would venture a guess that there's some elite infantry or cavalry hiding just beyond that hill. Uh, or some type of mixed flanking contingent, maybe Heltist and uh, swords or something, I don't know. So I think we're going to see something pop up from the blind spot behind this hill eventually, though, again, I could be wrong. So Macedon's going to start flexing its skirmish muscle here. It's able to pull its units back behind its pikes for protection. I like this. I like it a lot. Um, any javelins that feed into these levy pikes will make a difference for Rome in that it'll be less frontline units to pull down. At the same time, these are not expensive units, they are not high value units, so this is honestly not bad for Macedon to be in that position. Wouldn't it be really cool if we just see like a massive force of companion cavalry come cresting over the hill at just the right moment to try and land a bunch of rear charges? Be interesting. The Roman player is certainly not giving up his protection for this flank. He's actually taking his triari solely to his right flank. The cavalry was also hanging out on the left flank, but now he is moving this direction, so if Macedon does have anything hidden here, he might get a good chance to spring it, or the Roman could be making this movement to attempt to get them to spring it. We'll see. I'm, I'm hoping, obviously, as you all can see, that we're going to see some action over there in that regard. So the pikes are going to wheel up their sarissas to try and dissuade the Romans from a head-on assault. The Romans are unleashing their pila, as if to engage in a head-on assault. I like the hoplites being able to hold over here, potentially against the triari. I don't, they won't be able to hold against three of them, um, but it is gonna be a nice support unit. You can see the levy pikes really feeling the heat already. Um, they are going to struggle in this fight. And so Rome, Rome has basically decided, hey, these units can't block well, I'm gonna unload all my pila and I might be able to just get rid of the Macedonian pike line once and for all. And they, they may. They may very well, and I like how the Hastati threw their javelins and are now giving way to the the Principe to do the same. They have been throwing their pila, and so at this point, the Levy Pike line is utterly decimated. Now, some people wonder why you don't see more pikes in Rome 2. This is, this is why, right here. Almost every unit has javelins, and these pikes are going to be so depleted. They're poor against missiles. They're easy to deplete. They're easy to outmaneuver. They are not easy to use in melee in uh, multiplayer. We do have a Triari Assault here on the Hoplites for Macedon. They are moving around the flank. I still have not seen anything sprung from this area by Macedon yet. So it's possible, I guess, this is their whole army, though I somewhat doubt it. I still think that there's probably more hidden units somewhere. If not, I'm going to be a little bit shocked because it doesn't seem like Macedon has enough value here for the, the funds spent. But if they don't, then it's just another indicator as to why I said what I did earlier about Macedon not being as good a faction as Rome in multiplayer. The Romans... Yep, so see, here's a unit coming out of hiding there, so I think Macedon is about to spring some more troops. Here comes a citizen cavalry. Surely there's more than that. There's still a blind spot back here behind this hill for Rome. They don't have eyes on it. So a citizen cavalry coming out of hiding, will it be enough? The Equites Extraordinary already have a really good engagement going back here, as does the General and Bodyguard. Nice um, slinger fire, though, coming in to crush that. Yeah, here comes the Thessalian cavalry, so there are units coming out of hiding. For Macedon, however, their main line is already decimated, and Rome is pushing in with overwhelming force. Um, so I about half wonder if these reinforcements have been sprung a little too late, uh, because the Romans were able to focus their full fury against the uh, the Macedonians. Now, nice intercept here by the citizen cavalry. These mercenary Cretan archers are going to want to back off of there and let those cavalry make that fight. The Thessalian cavalry drops in there as well. The Romans do have Triari racing towards that cavalry fight. Um, and so, yeah, the, the main line for the Macedonians is collapsing. The shield bearer general is getting completely overwhelmed by these Roman troops. The shield bearer is not a good match for Principe. Might be a decent matchup against Triari, and look at this. The expensive skirmishing component of Macedon is going to be caught by the Principe. Heavy infantry taking on skirmishers. This is a no-win scenario 
for Macedon in that case. And although it was a nice intercept, these Saki uh, Extraordinary held up quite well. Plenty long enough for the Triari to move in, which means at this point that the Macedonian Cavalry is also dead. And it is going to mostly be a downhill slide at this point for Macedon as they are enveloped and overwhelmed by the superior Roman troops. And I guess in a way, not altogether that different from what we see in history, where the Macedonians were just kind of outmatched uh, in terms of a better organization of army and a more flexible fighting unit, which obviously was part of what gave Rome some of its tremendous success. Now, I have to say, out of real curiosity, I would love to see you all get in the comments and have a discussion here. Who wins? In a battle between, so let's let's take like an let's take a, a very successful early Roman commander, and it almost makes me sick to admit it because I hate him. Uh, but let's say it's Scipio Africanus and his legions that faced off against Hannibal at Zama, versus Alexander and his grand phalanx, his professional army at its height. Who wins that battle, Scipio Africanus or Alexander? Let's say that the battle occurs on um, you know relatively open ground right? Something that doesn't immediately take away the capability for the phalanx to function. Let's assume Alexander was intelligent enough to not get his army in a position where it couldn't fight, and I think that is a fair assumption to make, um, because Alexander was proven to be an excellent commander. Um, so who do you think wins that fight? Obviously, I'm biased against Rome. I, I think Alexander actually could have pulled off victories against the Romans with his phalanx. I think a lot of it had to do with commander, though I will admit, I do believe the Romans did have the superior political system, the superior uh, means of raising and organizing an army, and I think that obviously it makes a huge difference, but I also give Alexander credit where I feel like it's due as a commander. I think he was fairly unrivaled, and considering the uh, victories that Hannibal was able to score against the Romans, I for one think that Alexander could have pulled off victories with his Macedonian-style phalanx against a Roman maniple. Again, that said, you never know, right? The Romans may, may have gotten creative, and uh, we'll see who pulls it off. But I'm curious to see what you all think. Obviously, the result was very different at Sinocephali. I believe the Romans handed the Macedonians a pretty decisive defeat. Um, again, I haven't studied that one in a while, so I need to go back. If I get it wrong, feel free. But fun, fun curiosity discussion there, right? Who do you all think wins that battle? between Alexander and, say, Scipio. I, I would have loved to have said something like Caesar, but then looking at Caesar, I mean, that was a later time the Romans had, you know, better armor, um, <laughs> changes to their troops. That, I mean, that's a pretty long difference in time, too, between Alexander and Caesar, so maybe that's not a fair comparison. I think that was the real height of Roman power around that time. Uh, it would have been interesting to see that uh, potentially as well, indeed. But uh, in any case, that's why I use Scipio, because I was going for the whole Primarian type thing. Anyway, fun battle between uh, Hotel Soap and Dear, Dear Hair Day. I can't say it right. <laughs> but anyway, Macedon did take the short end of the stick here. It is a difficult fight versus Rome. I do like that Macedon was trying to flex its skirmish muscle. I, I do feel like they can flex this over Primarian Rome. However, I think that one thing Macedon has to consider going against Primarian Rome is that since that limits the number of skirmishers and the type of skirmishers that Rome can bring, it, it leaves them, you know, so for instance, they invested all this cash in these expensive skirmishers, but then got overwhelmed by a truly larger number of heavy infantry. It became hard for Macedon to fight back against that. Uh, citizen cavalry here, um, I like them as a holding force, but they just did extremely poor uh, even in the better engagements against the Saki Extraordinary. I love the use of the Triari to support a cavalry fight. Triari are extremely hardy, well-armored, heavy defense spears. Um, they are not easy for cavalry to deal with. And so I love how uh, Hotel Soap here took those and ran down that flank with his cavalry and supported them. And um, ob obviously these Triari didn't seem to have much problem with the Hoplites either. They are a higher quality unit. And the Prinkipe were way more than a match for anything else in the battlefield, especially the shield bearer. So I think a few things come to mind when I see these battles. Number one, obviously, I think there was things here that the Macedonian player may have been able to do better. But to be honest, to bring a pike phalanx and defeat Rome with it, even Primarian Rome, is not easy in this game. So I want to make that clear out front because some people may think, ah, oh, look, he botched it. Rome beat him down. It is not easy to make that win. 
um, especially not in that fashion. Um, so a few things though that come to mind for me, I feel like that this also highlights the fact that Rome, Rome 2 never quite got pikes right. In Rome 1, pikes were similar in a lot of regards, except for one big difference, which is that when they did get into melee, they got a lot of kills, and they were very deadly. Um, in Rome 2, it still takes a while for those kills to happen, even when you get someone to charge straight into the phalanx, and then you combine that with their poor maneuverability and lackluster um, block strength, and it really makes phalanx very underwhelming in Rome 2 and makes them hard to use. Uh, so I feel like that from a balancing standpoint, although most things in this game got to a good point, I feel like pikes and hoplites still just never really became what they should have been in order to make this game a little more well-rounded. Um, and so I think that's why you see so much emphasis in Total War Rome 2 on sword units, because those two never really came into the type of balance that they should have been, right? Hoplites kind of get counted as an anti-large unit. They get a bonus versus large because they carry a spear. But hoplites, I don't think, were fielded with the intent, the sole intent at least, of fighting off cavalry. They were clearly another tool to fight the enemy infantry. And so I think that's where the balance gets messed up here. And it's the same thing with uh, the, the pikes on this game. They are certainly a tool against infantry. And it is difficult to use them against infantry because everybody and their dog in this game has javelins that go straight past the low missile block chance into the relatively low armor. And so the, the phalanxes fall apart far too easily, in my opinion, whereas in Rome 1, it was a little bit more challenging to crumble a phalanx um, in that game. So anyway, fun battle here. Glad we got to see it. Good discussion, hopefully, and hope you all enjoyed it. Air of Carthage, signing out for now. I'll see you soon with some more action in Total War Rome 2.